Before we start, we would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land we're recording on. For me, that is the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. And for me, it's the Wurundjeri peoples of the Kulin Nation. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody, <laughs> We on this fine, fine day. Oh, it's a lovely day in Melbourne. How is it in Sydney? It's a little bit bleak. Oh, that is bleak. Have you ever seen a dog walk on its hind legs? Ooh, oh, that God, is what is bleak. that from? I think it's. Um, I think I got it a bit mixed up, but it's Mean Girls. Oh, it's not She's the Man or Liam. <laughs> no, that was that was the other week. But anyway, this is Angie. This is Evie, and you're back for. Oh, Two girls, one pond. your theme song. We don't have a theme song, so we sh- change it up every week. Oh. But it's always it always sounds the same. Let's face it. Yeah, it always sounds like a really bad religious um, cock rock song from the nineties by a band called Creed. <laughs> <laughs> what about when we went through that time where all we did is sing every single song in Creed? Yeah, I still do. It's you know. one of my favorite things to do. And when you and I video message each other, we often end up in those Creed. Yeah. Style songs in everything you're doing. Oh. <laughs> peace rules, peace rules. <laughs> <laughs> just everything, any given moment, we just had to creed it out. When in doubt, creed it out. That's what my mum used to say. <laughs> Gee, there's been some deaths this year, hasn't there? Have you noticed how many men in TV? deaths they've been you know um that guy you actually sent it to me you keep sending me deaths I know I keep sending you dead white men yeah, the the dad from girls I know one of our favorite shows in oh the world. I love it I'm binging it again for the fourth time his name's Ted in it I think Ted his name's Peter Scolari yeah but I was talking about the da- like the dad's name in girls I think it was Tad Tad it's Tad Oh, and he has a coming out story. That was a really good storyline in that show. Yeah, um, he just it? passed away. Yeah, that's really sad. Not long ago. And who was the one that passed away just before that that everybody was losing their minds about? Oh, the guy from um, Sex in the City. Oh, yeah, um, um, Stanford. Stanford. I know. Stanford. That was a sad one. What about... Your favourite show in the world. One of. Um, one of. I would say one of the very tip, tippity top of your shows is Friends. And yeah. Gunther has just died. I know. James Michael Tyler. That's that's actually a huge, huge loss if you're a Friends lover like I am. Yeah. Like I'm a diehard Friends lover. And Gunther played such a role on Friends. Like he was obsessed with Rachel. He owned, he was always at the coffee shop. They were always at the coffee shop. The whole show is almost based around the coffee shop. Can I um, say something really controversial? Well, when do you ever ask before you say something controversial, really? Please don't at me. Gunther was a dreadful actor. He was one of the worst actors I've ever seen on TV. Like, don't you think? Evie, too soon. (laughs) Way too soon. Show your freaking respect. (laughs) The man isn't even cold. Rest in peace, James. You were probably a beautiful, lovely man, really, honestly. But damn, you couldn't act. (laughs) Sorry. I know it's too soon. But it's far um, too soon. It's the only thing I didn't like about Friends was um, not 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 the character, just the fact that that man couldn't act. You know, every I time. think he was supposed to be like that though. Like he was supposed to be awkward and weird. So do you think maybe he was such a good actor that I thought he was a bad actor because <laughs> he was supposed to be playing a bad actor? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, supposed to be that awkward. So many people have said all friends acting is bad. Let me tell you something. I know that you love friends so, so much. I know because we've lived together and I have watched you watch it. Um, and I know that when you are stressed or when you are happy or when you are sad or when you are bored or when you are really, really busy, you will always find time to pop friends on and watch it in bed. Um, And guess what? What? There are still episodes I've never seen. (gasps) 
And I didn't know that and I keep finding out because, you know, it's it's being shown on Channel 11 or whatever that Channel 10 show um, channel is, there'll be an episode that'll come up all of a sudden and I'm like, Sacre blah. I've never seen this before. Oh, my God, there were some real names they got on, on that show. There's uh, that many episodes of Friends that it actually doesn't surprise me that you haven't seen them all. Like up until recently, by recently I mean probably like, three years ago, I there was episodes that I hadn't seen and that's saying something. Well, how old were you when it came out? I wasn't I wasn't a diehard Friends when it was on. It was more later on in life. Um, my best friend at the time watched it all the time. It was always on, that in Law and Order. Because you would have been quite young when it started, so you couldn't have been a massive diehard fan as a two-year-old. No, I started watching it like as an adult and it was it's one of those things that I even put on when to fall asleep to just so I had the sa- I was so familiar with their voices that I couldn't fall asleep like because I travel a lot and I'm often alone that I would have to fall asleep because it was like the sound of my friends. Yeah. And so sad because I didn't have like friends around. So even when I was on the bachelorette, right? I couldn't ever watch TV because I worked so much, but they let me have a TV in my room because I said I need to fall asleep to friends because I don't have any friends here. I've just got a bunch of dudes I've never met and then all this production crew that are producing me. And I was like, at night, I need to fall asleep because I wasn't allowed my phone to my friends. And I'd pop it on and I'd fall asleep to it every single night. And then in the middle of it, there's just this little sneaky video of me would come up and go, now we're alone, Angie. Yeah. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> this was the plan all along. <laughs> and I'd go, and I'd go, anyway, I've got nothing to say. Bye. We'll see ya. The dogs are good. Bye. <laughs> but I don't blame you for uh, not seeing all the episodes. Look. You know, there's 450,000 of them. That is one show that you is your go to show. Your other go to show, I know, because I used to live with you, is Sex in the City. You would, could watch that yes. over and over and over and over and over and over. Still can. And over and over and over and over and over again. I used to be that. I actually OD'd on it. Like, I, I used to have the box set, so I used to just watch it. It would be on all the time. Yeah. Like, played it all the time. Everyone I ever lived with, we would watch it constantly, just over and over and over, and got to the point where I was like, I can't, I can't. Like, it's finally broken me. Um, so, but you know, there's one show I can still watch every time it comes on, even if I see it on the guide, the TV guide, yeah. and I can see it's going to there, I, I'll go straight over to it. Do you know what it is? What do you think? Oh, God. Um, Will and Grace? That's a good one, but no. I got into Will and Grace very, very late. Yeah, very I've late. never got into it, which people find sh- like shocking. It's so good. I'd never got into the second series, like the, you know, the reboot, um, but I got into it later. I watched the entire box set and I was like, oh, God, how did I not do that earlier? Like – at the time, it's so, so good. No, it's close to that though. Would I know? Yeah, you know it. Everyone knows it. But I don't think you've ever been a massive fan of it. Seinfeld? Yeah. Yeah. No, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I loved that show. I still My love that show so much. My dad loved that show. I, I was traumatised by it because he would make us turn off The Simpsons to watch Seinfeld and I'd be like, what a monster. But it's so funny because you really like curb your enthusiasm. I'm obsessed with Larry David. Like I'm in love with him. And that's who created Seinfeld. So, And I've not ever gotten into it curb your enthusiasm and I love Seinfeld so you'd think that it would yeah you know but neither of us have gotten into the other I just love Larry he's so freaking weird actually I binged that the other day I put it back on because I used to binge the hell out of that too there we go look we're learning things about each other do you know what's it is there I mean apart from the ones we just talked about you know when people find out someone hasn't watched any of the Harry Potters yes, or anything like that. Like do you have anything like that where there's a huge movie franchise or a huge movie that everyone like love actually and or something like that that you've never ever seen, that everyone has seen? Yeah, I feel like there would be. Um, you got really cross at me for not seeing something re- like recently. When I say recently, I, w- I mean within the last five years because I'm really bad with time. Yeah, remember I said I hadn't seen it and you were like, what oh, the was it shit? Beaches? I made you watch Beaches, didn't I? Yeah, we watched that together. Um, oh, I can't remember now. No, me neither. But you know what it is I've never, ever, ever seen and I never, ever, ever will? 
any James Bond movie. Yeah, that's not that shocking. I can't see you loving, sick of everybody idolising a fella that just loves girls in bikinis. I mean, it makes sense. But the thing is it was in my house all the time and I just refused, even as a child. My dad would watch them. Like it's been around since before I was born. Yeah. And my dad would love to watch bloody John Wayne film and a James Bond movie and I would just go, Dad, this looks dumb. This looks stupid. I'm not watching this garbage. I don't think I've ever watched an entire James Bond, to be fair. I've just missed everything that you just said right after I've never watched a complete James Bond film. You just went completely mute. Oh, I wasn't talking. I was just going. Oh, were you? No, I was <laughs> talking, you freak. <laughs> that is something I would do, to be fair. <laughs> Um, somebody told me the other day that they'd never seen Titanic and I almost spewed in my mouth. Oh, that's 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 ridiculous. How have you not seen Titanic? It's only one of the best movies of all time. Yeah. Do you know I had an American friend over the other day and we were all watching, like it was a group of us, we were watching the Madonna's um Truth or dare, well, we call it in this country in bed with Madonna, which was very funny when Magda Zavansky took the piss out of it and called it uh, in bed with Maduna, with my Duna. <laughs> Maduna. Um, but that's a by the by. Um, there, the American in the room started saying, because in the documentary, Madonna is obsessed with this Spanish actor called Antonio Banderas. And no one knew who he was in the States because he hadn't done any movies anywhere but Spain. And in Spain, he was the it man. He was the heartthrob. He was everything. And it was so funny because in my friend, the American friend said, you know, no one knew who he was. Like he was no one until this documentary. And I'm like, no, he was huge in Spain. And he goes, yeah, but – and I'm like, what is it with Americans thinking that that no one's made it unless they know who they are? It's like Bollywood. You know, Bollywood actors have billions of followers but Americans think that they're not well known. Yeah, and they're probably absolutely loaded and they're like, well, if you haven't made it here, you haven't made it anywhere. Exactly. If you haven't made it in America, if we don't know who you are, then who who are you? Anyway – I can't think of any other groovies. I really can't. So, but there's probably something I have seen that haven't seen that people are just wildly disappointed about. I'm just wild about Angie. She's just wild about me. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, Angela Benice Kent. Yes, Evie. Justice Jones. Um, thank you. <laughs> um, you were a week before me. Funnily enough, I was actually in said town um, when it happened. You came out of lockdown a week before I came out of lockdown. Mm-hmm. And can I just say, um, I'm exhausted. <laughs> It's been three whole days and I'm exhausted. Been three days since I came out of lockdown. Don't say you're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, not sorry. So you're, you're not over it. God, you never want to go back to the lockdowns. You're just saying it's hard to get back into shape uh, in terms of um, socialising. I think there might be a part of me that wants to go back into lockdown, um, but that could be the Stockholm Syndrome side of me. But no, 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 I don't want to go into lockdown. God, no. Um, but I had friends come over. I moved into my new place in July the God. 2nd and I finally had people come and visit my house to see yeah. my new home. Isn't that wild? And... I'm exhausted. Uh, It took me a whole day to – I stayed in bed the next day and I don't even drink anymore. So I wasn't drunk. I didn't have a hangover but I had a hangover. You had an emotional hangover. Yeah, an emotional, social hangover. That's a thing. Like you can just be so exhausted by humans and for so long, especially Melbourne, like I can't even relate hardly at all. I've only done – I only did eight weeks of it here. You've been doing it off and on for a long time. So that's going to take a while for all of you to get that that muscle 
working and the social anxiety too of not having to be around energies. It, that would be exhausting. It is really exhausting. It's a lot more exhausting than you think it's going to be. Rookie error, don't have people around to your house when you first come out of lockdown. What you need to do is go out for dinner because they have the time limit restrictions. So you literally can't stay out for more than two hours and it works <laughs> because by the time you've eaten and you've spoken and you've had a laugh and blah, 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 you're exhausted and the restaurant says, I'm sorry, you have to get out now. And you're like, oh, thank God, I've got to go home and lie on the lounge and yes, I, I'm speechless. I'm so speechless. And then you don't have to kick people out of the restaurant, you know, they can do it for you, whereas you'd have to kick people out of your Home. Yeah. I had um about probably eight people come over and everyone left in dribs and drabs. And the only two people at the end of the night that were left were two extremely um inebriated men. Oh really? <laughs> and I finally had to say when they were pouring another glass of wine, I was like, guys, this is your last this is the last drinks. Okay? Oh, you had to do you had to be that person. I, I did. And I was walking around, I was cleaning everything up. I was it took me like I was doing it for about an hour. They didn't and get the hint didn't get the hint and I was just like okay guys you gotta you gotta move on and there was a lot of stumbling out to the front door and then you know you do that goodbyes on the street so they're just really out the door yeah <laughs> so they can't be like oh wait I forgot oh wait I gotta go to the toilet yeah no out the door out the door and then on the street all the hugs you know the hugs that go and I've more hugs and like five you know, rounds and, yeah of hugs and, <laughs> uh, and I was five. like Guys, you've had like two years off and on of no hugs and you've just had to cop five rounds of hugs in one night and you're just like, I'm going back to bed. That's another thing. Like the physical intimacy is hard. It's literally hard to have someone in that energy space. Mm -hmm. It's like, whoa. Yeah, we've all been on our phones. There's another smell that I haven't had in two years. Another smell. So it's all senses if you think about it. You physically have to look at people again. You have to feel their energy. You have to smell them. You have to touch them. Sometimes you have to taste them. Yes. Whereas on the phone, all you have to do is look at them. But everybody's got so confident and cocky and mean behind their phones, haven't they? Because they don't have the fear of what it's like to be around somebody and being mean. Yeah, someone looking you in your eyes while you're talking to them. It's very intimidating isn't it like you you do really second guess what you're going to say to someone when you've got to say it to someone's eyes yeah and feel their presence yeah and maybe feel you know a slap to the face if you you know get a bit too cheeky with them <laughs> yeah well we're all ready for letting out some big old slaps after this year do you remember I feel. that time I beat up a guy that hit you oh yeah <laughs> should we tell that story that was we should totally oh. tell that story <laughs> that was so why? <laughs> Who we goes had, out <laughs> and gets a punch to the head? I do. <laughs> you do. And I absolutely wailed on that guy, didn't I? And the best part was the the footage of me because we had to go back the next day and watch the footage. No, they were no, told that about night. the footage. Or that night. Yeah. I can't remember. Um, But you, there was a guy and he was being a real smart ass to us and you gave him him a hard time or something and no what happened was he was saying really like sexual Disgusting. things yeah. to me and then you said something and he said something to you and then he got in my face and because he got in my face he had fake glasses on because it was dress up or something oh, so right. I took his fake glasses off his face and threw them on the floor and he hit me over the head he just punched you Punched you in the side of the head. He full hit my head and then you saw it and you and I just stood there, remember, and I went, <gasps> and I started crying and then you just saw it and you punched him all the way down <laughs> the balcony. A, a b veranda and I had a wig on at the time, <laughs> a blonde <laughs> afro, and as I'm punching him, he's trying to get away. I'm chasing him, punching him in the back of the head. My wig kept falling off and that's all I was like, oh, my God. My flat my hair, my flat head is going to show underneath it. Oh, my God. And the, and the guy that managed the hotel said that they watched that footage over and over and over again of this girl just chasing this guy down, a, down a balcony. With, a wig. <laughs> with the wig slowly. 
Oh, I wish we could have seen it from not our own oh, eyes. So I mean, do I. I wish a lot of things about that night. I wish I didn't get smashed in the head. One thing I do also remember about that night is that the police arrived and you would not press charges. I mean, this is a whole other story, but you were like, I can't, I know, I don't want to go through, you know, going to the cop shop and doing all the things. I forgot and about that. I remember when I, I so walked out, he was then out the front yeah. of the place and he looked at me and he laughed and then you and I said, don't ever look at me. Don't look at me ever again. And he was just like, something like you got off lucky this time. And, I, and then I started screaming again and I was like, and I was yelling out to the police, but they'd already gone because then I, yeah, I wanted was, to do it. And there was one police woman that came up to us and she goes, are you on Gogglebox? <laughs> We're like, no, <laughs> it's not us. We've got to go by. We've got to go. We went home to our dogs. <laughs> oh, God. Let's go back into lockdown. <laughs> that, was ga- that was gammon. What a, what a time to be alive. By the way, to, to end all of this, I just want to say I do not condone violence. No, neither of us do. I never should have touched these stupid fake glasses, but he shouldn't have sexualized me and my friend. So, so <laughs> that was us today. That was a that was quite full on. Sorry if we've offended anybody in yeah. any way, but here yeah. we're here. But if, and if we're anyone here. picks on you, let us know. We're there yeah. for you. I'll uh, um, send Evie their way, and I'll yeah, just, just cry. Send me. <laughs> I'll um, take your glasses off for you. <laughs> please head to Apple Podcasts and rate and review the show. You can get in touch with us directly by emailing the podcast at. Two girls at novaentertainment.com.au. And don't forget to follow Nova Podcast Official on Instagram for all of the behind the scenes action. And there's always great behind the scenes action. Oh, it's not just a Korean K pop band, BTS. It's also what we do. <laughs> Whoa. Where did that come from? All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. Bye. Bye. That was beautiful. Thanks, it was very long. (laughs)